I used to think there was just fat and skinny. Apparently, there's a lot of things that can be wrong on your body. My hairline is so weird. My pores are huge. My nail beds suck. Girls get these messages about what girl world is, clearly from the culture, right? I mean, of course they're, you know, reading magazines and watching TV, and yes, there are images about girls that are really a problem, absolutely. But what I think the missing piece is, is that girls take those, that information, those messages, and they take those rules, and they are the enforcers on a day-to-day -day basis. And what girls do is that sometimes um, they don't know exactly what the rules are. Right? I mean, in the movie, there are scenes where you'll see girls say, well, these are the rules, right? You cannot wear this on Friday and you can't this on Monday. And you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. But for the most part, girls don't really know what the rules are until they break them. And when they break them, they are very clear about what those rules are. <laughs> Why would Regina refer to herself as a fugly slut? <laughs> From that, I really decided to go to the root causes of why girls were getting themselves vulnerable to really scary situations. You know, why? Why was it so important to have a boyfriend, no matter how he treated you? Why was it so important to put up with your friends, no matter how badly they treated you? Was there a connection between the two? Uh, why is it so important? Why do girls do this thing where they pretend that they're really fat or they're really stupid or they're not good at things when they know that they are? Damn, Africa, what happened? How'd you do? Not so good. You know, I think I need a tutor. Why do girls on sort of the opposite end sort of front that they've got it all together and they've got their game on, but in, and in fact, they really don't think that at all. You know, where, what is that about? So I started an organization that would really address all of those issues and why it would make girls vulnerable to violence, actually. And I also did it for boys as well. And so that has metamorphosized. It's become the Empower Program, an organization I started in 1994 and it teaches thousands and thousands of boys and girls between the ages of 10 and 18. And um, it shows them what the root causes of violence are. And it's not the, like the person coming out of the bushes. It's the stuff that you see and that kids see every single day at school. And it starts with somebody pushing somebody you know, down or into a trash can every day at school. And it also starts with horrible emails that get circulated about, you know, you don't talk to her because she is you know, a slut, or she's this, or she's that, or we've decided that she is no longer worthy of being treated as a human being. Did you write this? No, I swear. Then you told somebody. She told. You little bitch. Those are the seeds of not treating people equally, and those are the seeds of getting to a place where you feel that other people are not equal to you, and so you can treat them however you want. And that's how violence really occurs. Okay. Janice Ian Dyke. Who is that? I think that's that kid, Damien. Yeah, he's almost too gay to function. <laughs> that's funny. Put that in there. Yeah. I think lots of times girls feel really alone, like, oh, you know, I am the biggest loser that's ever, you know, ever walked the face of the earth. And, you know, there's all these girls who have very similar experiences. So it's important to me that I think what they're going through is really important. Hey, how's your first day? When I first started getting phone calls, when the book was first published, I started getting phone calls from actually several people about uh, maybe buying my life rights or buying the rights for a movie. And some of the phone calls, I thought I was in a movie. You know, I would get these phone calls like, Rosalind, we are going to do great things. It's going to be, and I'm like, who are you? I don't even, I do not know who you are. And frankly, you are freaking me out, and I need to say goodbye. <laughs> I was just like, no. Then I got a phone call from Tina Fey, and she said, you know, I think what you do is really interesting. And I said, okay, this is a woman I can deal with. <laughs> I wrote Queen Bees and Wannabes because I've been working with boys and girls for years. And I would do these parent coffees, orientations that parents go to, you know, two people come. But, you know, <laughs> or they used to come, now more people come. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I would go to these parent coffees and orientations. and. At the end of these, pro of these programs, parents would come up to me and say just like their kids do. You know, like a girl will come up to me after a class all the time or an assembly or a presentation and say, um, Rosalind, can I talk to you for a second? And they want to tell me about some really, you know, difficult problem that they're, that they're dealing with. And after I was doing these parent orientations, the parents would come up to me and say exactly the same thing. You know, Rosalind, can I talk to you for a second? And then they would tell me about how helpless they felt and how they totally didn't get the world of their daughter. And I wanted to just write everything I possibly could for those parents. 
And so I said, this is everything I think that you should know about what the world looks like to your daughter. It's very easy for adults to forget what it was like to, you know, when they were in sixth grade and seventh grade and eighth grade or their, you know, their teen years and for them to, you know, look at it sort of in a superficial way. Oh, it's a rite of passage. It's no big deal. You know, people treating you like dirt every day. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. You'll get through it. You'll be fine. No problem. You won't even remember. Well, the problem is, is that it is that it actually is a big deal because it teaches you really important things, which sometimes are not, which often can be really not good. What is that smell? Oh, Regina gave me some perfume. You smell like a baby prostitute. Thanks. The more you care about how the society values women, like what you have to have to have high social status, the more you care about having high social status or, because it's easy to say, oh, I don't care about high social status. I mean, even the most popular girls say, I don't care about high social status. I mean, lots of people say that, but that's actually not true. You want to belong and the society tells you, here's what you have to have to be as a girl, which is pretty, maybe athletic with the right body, the right style. You have to, you know, maybe the right groups, the right music for what your community deems as having high social status and being cool. Well, the more you think that that, that having that stuff is connected to who you are, then the more you're going to sacrifice who you are in the process. There's nothing wrong with wanting to belong. It's only when those people treat other people badly that you get yourself into trouble. You have really good eyebrows. Thanks. Move. Move. Everybody's in a group. It's how you feel comfortable. It's how you feel good about yourself in lots of ways. It's just that sometimes it comes at such a cost of who you are. And also that you, by wanting to be in the group, will put up with that group treating other people badly. So, it, but in and of itself, it's not a bad thing. I really want to lose three pounds. Oh my God, what are you talking about? You're so skinny. Ugh. Shut up. One of the things that I think the movie does really well is talk about, and it really shows well, is how the girls within the group treat each other badly. I know that's a very complicated thing. And nobody sees it because in the group, the group all looks you know, the way they do, which is they, um, girls always tell me that girls who are in sort of the higher social, social status groups begin to act the same, look the same, dress the same, just as we see in the movie. And a lot, some of that is true. They start to conform, like I talked about before, they start to conform to each other and they start to look the same, act the same, laugh the same, all that kind of stuff. So to the outside world, it looks like they all are the best of friends, but in that group are very rigid hierarchies. That is so fetch. Gretchen. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. Now, if you're in that group, a lot of times girls on the, you know, outs, they won't admit that. That's really hard to say because it's seen as being disloyal. But what I know from working with girls for a long time is that oftentimes girls who are the closest of friends don't feel comfortable actually really, really being truthful to their friends, meaning that your friends know everything about you and they know what you're most sensitive about. And what I know for the most part about girls um, working with girls and, and just with people is that the people who know you best know exactly what to say that will hurt the most. Hello? If someone says something bad about you, you'd want me to tell you, right? No. What if it was someone you thought was your friend? I want the movie to get girls talking about these issues. I want them to realize what the costs are. I, th I think one of the best actual scenes for me in the movie is at the very end when they're sitting and then you see Regina walk by and just their whole body language is totally more relaxed. It's not like, oh, we live in this perfect world. It's not like, oh, you know. It's just people just sort of chill. And I want girls to be able to see that if they do that, if they relax, that it's just a lot easier. You can breathe. You can take the risks that you should, meaning you can be on the math team. You know, you can do things that, you know, people think are not cool. But, and so you take the risks that you want to take, and you don't take the risks that you shouldn't, meaning you're so focused on sacrificing what you want for other people, then you're going to do things, like you're going to drink more, you're going to do more drugs, you're going to, you know, you'll do drugs in the first place, you'll, you know, drink and drive, you'll be much more likely to do things like that because it's so much harder to stand your ground. And so you take the risks that you shouldn't. And you lose, again, like you just lose yourself in the process. So I would really love girls to be able to see that the cost is high. You know, for belonging, the cost is very high. And are they willing to take that price? Are they willing to pay that price? That's a very high price. The price is about as high as you can get, which is you. Erin! Erin, wait, just... Okay, call me. The 
the most important thing for me in talking to girls and teaching girls is that they understand what the culture is telling them about what the rules are to be a girl so that basically the culture doesn't take advantage of them. Because what I think is, is that if girls aren't educated about how the society is telling them, how the culture is telling them, this is what you've got to be to be a girl, and by the way, this is what you cannot be. But the more that that happens, the more that you don't get to make decisions for yourself. And what I want is for girls making decisions for themselves.